excited for 2019. So tonight we're going to do Vision Night. I'm going to share with you what the Lord's laid on my heart. Boom! That's loud. I'll pull it down a little bit. Oh, that's my tie bar. Roll one. Oh, you got it? Huh? Oh, you need it up? All right, this is for you, Grandma. <laughs> Uh, tonight we're going to do vision night, so make sure you're here for that 5 o'clock. Uh, we'll do some singing and stuff, and then I'll just share with you the vision that God's laid on my heart that um, uh, that for that we have for 2019, that I have for 2019, that he has for 2019. Uh, so be in your place. Uh, I don't have too many materials. I have a calendar, and you can take some notes on the back of that. I'm not fancy. So uh, I've got a video to show you, and uh, I, can't, I got a theme now. I told you on Wednesday I didn't have a theme, but God laid it on my heart, and this is... This is what I was looking for. So the Lord gave it to me, and I'm going to share it with you guys. So I'm excited for 20. Who's excited for 2019? Who already has New Year's resolutions? <laughs> Pippa does. She's a planner. Miss Sophia, you don't have any? Wow. Dropping the ball. No. <laughs> Trust this word. That's good. Good song. Kind of wish you would have sang the other one. Where are you at? There you are. That other one was good. What was the other one? What's the name of that? Bow the knee. Bow the knee. Bow the knee. That's a good one. Uh, we'll be in our Bibles this morning in Jeremiah 23. So you, uh, we'll, we'll read there first, and then we'll flip over to Romans chapter 10. <coughs> that cough loud, too? It's what? Kids church. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, kids, if you want to. <laughs> Goodbye, little people. Bye. Bye. Wow, they actually said goodbye. <laughs> Jeremiah 23 and then Romans chapter 10. Is where we'll be. This morning I'm starting off my ministry preaching the gospel, and I'll finish my ministry preaching the gospel whenever that is going to be. So don't expect anything too deep. I'm just a beggar telling another beggar where the bread is. Amen. <clears throat> Jeremiah 23 and verse 6. Jeremiah 23 and verse 6. It says, In his days Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely. And this is his name whereby he shall be called the Lord our righteousness. Let's pray. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, again I ask that if there's anyone in this room who is not saved, Lord, I pray that you press upon their heart. Lord, convict them. Lord, for salvation, that they have a strong desire to receive Christ as their Lord and Savior. Lord, there's people out here hurt, there's people out here weak, there's people out here need encouragement, Lord, and need love. Lord, there's people who always need conviction. Father, I pray that your word will go forth and accomplish that which it is willing and will do. Father, I pray that you be with this preacher, be with me now. Lord, fill me with the words you would have me to say. Help me not to say anything that you would not have me to say. Lord, I pray that you do not hinder the Holy Spirit's work in this service this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. So we read that. The Lord, our righteousness, is the title of the message. The Lord, our righteousness. Go to Romans chapter 10. <coughs> Excuse me. I apologize to YouTube. Who's ever watching, I do have a cough drop in my mouth. So if, I'm, if you see my tongue moving, don't be offended. <laughs> Romans chapter 10 and verse 1 is where we'll start. Well, gospel message, ain't you, supposed to, uh, ain't you supposed to start in Romans? Actually, you can start at any page in the Bible, either in type or picture, but Romans is a good book. So Romans chapter 10, I'm gonna, we're, we're going to look at Israel's rejection of Christ. Israel's rejection. I'm going to share four verses, three verses with you here. Romans chapter 10, verse 1, it says, Paul is writing, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. And it should be the heart and desire of every Christian that your neighbor might be saved. Amen. It is the heart and desire of every Christian, or should be the heart and desire of every Christian, to see your neighbor get saved. Amen. There we go. Amen. So, uh, verse 2, For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. They have a zeal of God, but don't really know Him. It's not according to knowledge. How, how, and what do I mean? Acts chapter 21, 20, don't turn there. Uh, but it says that the, the uh, Israelites were zealous of the law. 
The law was the Ten Commandments given to Moses. Moses gave them to the children of Israel. They were zealous for the law, to uphold the law. Galatians 1.14 says, uh, Paul even says, he says, I was zealous above all uh, of the traditions of my fathers. Uh, just like the Pharisees would focus on tradition and try to uphold the law. And, and they, the Bible says here in Romans 10.2, For I bear them record, the Israelites, that they have a zeal of God. They love God. But not according to knowledge. They don't know him. There's, 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 you guys know my wife, Miss Catherine, but you don't know Miss Catherine like I know Miss Catherine. Or you don't, someone may not know you like someone else might know you. Like they know me, but we're just acquaintances, but they know me and we share things. Same thing with the Israelites and God. They know of God. They know he is. They know his laws. They know his commandments. But they have a, and they have a zeal for him, but no knowledge but not according to knowledge. Verse 3. This leads us to an equation in verse 3. It says, For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness, and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. So we have an equation here. Number one, the equation. We're ignorant of God's righteousness, plus zealous of God, equals going about to establish their own righteousness. If, I'm, if, if we're, we're talking about here in verse 3, we'll read it again. For they are being ignorant of God's righteousness. So they're ignorant of His righteousness. In verse 2, they have a zeal of God. So zeal of God plus an ignorant of His righteousness is leading them to going about to establish their own righteousness. Their own righteousness. Uh, number 1, you know, going about to establish their own righteousness. They try keeping the law, as I said a moment ago. Or good works. Number two, they have a standard, or people, even men today, will have a standard or a code of conduct that they don't want to break. Or they're turning a new leaf, and that's not what the Christian life is. If I take, if I take Muhammad out of uh, Islam, what do I have? A system of belief. If I take Buddha out of Buddhism, what do I have? A system of belief. If I take confusion out of confu or out of, out of yeah, if I take confusion out of Confucianism, I have confusion. No, we don't. It's, I, I have a system of belief. If I take Jesus Christ out of Christianity, you have nothing. Because right. everything in the Bible leads and points to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is everything. Uh, the Christian walk is not turning a new leaf and, and trying to be a good person and all that. No, it's only and wholly of the grace of God through righteousness in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the righteous. Jesus Christ is the righteous. Amen? Amen. <laughs> so man tried to uh, keep the law. The Israelites tried to keep the law, the Ten Commandments. Uh, they tried, and men today try to keep the law. We try to do good things. You ask someone, are you going to heaven when you die? They say, yes. Why? I'm a good person. Are you a good person? Or they, they trust in their religion or the religiosity, just like the Pharisees, the, the, the Sadducees and the Pharisees, I'm sorry, uh, and, uh, meaning they keeping the sacraments of uh, even nowadays of the Catholic Church. We keep the sacraments. Or as a Muslim, you pray five times a day. Make your trip to Mecca. Do the Salah and pray, right? Or we, uh, we trust in baptism. Others trust in baptism. Other, others trust in a little wafer that the priest gives you. Others trust in worry beads and prayer beads. But the Bible says that we can only put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ to save us from our sin. Yeah. So this will keep you. The equation was this. I, I quoted it earlier. I'll quote it again. We are, they were ignorant of God's righteousness. Man today is ignorant of God's righteousness. Because, is, because the preaching of the cross to them that perish is what? Foolishness. foolishness. It's foolishness. They're ignorant of God. It's foolishness to them to hear the preaching of the cross. Why would a man come to die for me? They don't really understand. It's ignorant of God's righteousness. And plus, zealous of, of God, the, old, the, uh, the Israelites here that he's writing to, and uh, talking about here, and then religion or religiosity. So this will keep you unsubmitted to God's righteousness. Verse 3 again. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. All three of these things will keep you unsubmitted unto the righteousness of God. This is what the Pharisees try to do. And look what Jesus says with me. Hold your spot here. Go to uh, Mark. The book of Mark. Matthew, Mark, the second book of the New Testament. Are we doing okay? Am I going too fast? Amen. All right. Mark chapter 7, verse 6 through 9. Look at what Jesus says. 
And he answered and said unto them, Well hath Isaiah prophesied of you, hypocrites, as it is written, This people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Howbeit in vain do they worship me, teaching for the doctrines, the commandments of men, remember the traditions of our fathers, and zealous of the law, for laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the tradition of men as the washing of pots and cups, and many other such thing, like things ye do. Verse 9, And he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God, that ye may keep your own tradition. They were trying to keep their own traditions, keep the law, a standard, a code of conduct, and keep their religion as justification for their salvation. And Jesus says, you're hypocrites because no man can do that. Uh, notice in, in, those verse, in those verses it says, lay aside and reject. I would submit to you and tell you today that that means they were not submitted to the righteousness of God, because they cared about the traditions of men, they cared about the traditions of their father, they were zealous for God, but they didn't know God, and they tried to use good works, keeping the law, standard of conduct, and religion, or religiosity, to keep them uh, pure to go to heaven, and that's, that's number two, my point, the problem, there's a problem with that, go back to Romans, Romans chapter three. <coughs> Romans in chapter 3 and verse 10, it says this. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Verse 11, there is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way, they are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. There is none justified before God's sight based on the based on keeping good works, based on who you are of your own merits. You cannot come to God uh, through yourself alone. The law declares man guilty before God. The law was never meant to save anyone. It was a way of life, not a way to life. Uh, verse 19 in this same chapter of 3. Now we know what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For mm -hmm. by the law is the knowledge of sin. Right. Had I not known the law, I would have never known sin. Uh, righteousness means this, doing right all the time. Simply put, doing right all the time. And I'll ask you, have you always done right? Have you always obeyed your parents? Have you ever told a lie? Have you ever blasphemed God's name and used the Lord's name in vain? Have you done? The, have you have you never ever done those things? Every one of us has done one, and God says, if you broke one commandment, you've broken them all, and you are you stand guilty. In verse nineteen here, that the that the every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. They become guilty before God. Verse twenty three says this in that chapter: For all have sinned and come short. Of the glory of God. God sets the standard. It's called the Ten Commandments. He says, if you can uphold the Ten Commandments, the same as a righteous and perfect man. But Jesus also said, if you if, if your righteousness exceed that of the Sadducees and the Pharisees, you shall in no wise enter into the kingdom of heaven, into the kingdom of God. Your righteousness has to exceed them. The Pharisees and the Sadducees were the religious rulers of the day. The religious rulers of the day would uphold, would try to uphold the law. All sixteen and hundred, or sorry, sixteen. 160 points in the law. Maybe it was 390. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't remember at the top of at the, at the moment. But they tried to keep all the points of the law. They were concerned about the washing of hands, as we read in Mark in Mark 7. Jesus said, "You care about the washing of hands and pots." And they would even come to Jesus and say, "Why are you sitting with sinners? Why are you sit? Why, why why don't your disciples wash their hands? Because that's a tradition of men." No man could ever uphold the law in and of ourselves because the Bible says, Romans 3.10, there is none righteous, no, not one. No man does good. Amen. I'm going to heaven because I'm a good person. No, the Bible says that there is none righteous. But even though I'm a preacher, I'm a pastor, I preach the gospel message, even, even though I'm a preacher, I am not righteous. Even though you're sitting here in church as a church member, say, or as a church member, you're not righteous. No man is righteous. Only one is righteous. Amen. That's Jesus Christ. Romans 5.12. Another page over in your Bible. So for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. 
No man can reach God's perfection, his standard of perfection. No man, no flesh. So why is that? Why, why can't we do that? The Bible says in Romans 5, 12, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, so death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. We were talking about Adam in the Garden of Eden this morning. Adam had a volitional likeness to God, were made in the image and likeness of God. His volitional likeness to God means that man has a will to do, to obey, or to disobey. When Adam ate the fruit in the Garden of Eden, he disobeyed God and through voluntary transgression <laughs> fell from that perfect state into a sinful state. And now man and subsequent uh, people who are born through generations have now come under the curse of man, which is death by sin. Therefore, we are all sinners because of one man. Sin entered into the world and death by sin. So death passed upon all men for all have sinned. Uh, uh, amen? <clears throat> Romans 6.23, excuse me. The Bible says, for the wages of sin is death. The payment for our sin is death. The payment for our sin is death. Death in the Bible, as we talked about earlier in our uh, Sunday school class, means separation. Revelation 20.14 says, And death and hell were delivered up, and were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever's name was not written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. If your name is not written in the, in the book of life, you will be cast one day into the lake of fire to spend an eternity separated from the love and holiness and righteousness of God forever and eternity in hell. And the only way that you can pay for that, the Bible says, for the wages of sin is death. It doesn't say for the wages of sin is baptism. Baptism does not pay your penalty. The wage, that, that means payment. Uh, uh, being, a good, being a good person doesn't mean that it's going to pay for your sin. Uh, paying a certain amount of money to a charitable organization or giving money in the offering plate at church is not going to pay your way for salvation. The Bible says for the wages of sin is death. The only way that you can pay for your sin is to spend uh, uh, your eternity forever and ever and ever in the lake of fire to pay for your sins, to appease the righteousness of God. Amen? That's bad news. That's terrible news. So we see the equation. We see the ignorant... That, that men is ignorant of God's righteousness, they're zealous for God, but going about to establish their own righteousness. We see the problem because no man is justified by the law. You can't uphold the law, you, no man can uphold the law. So now the, uh, the result is that man has to spend an eternity in hell. But I want to give you the solution. Number three, the solution. Go to Romans chapter 5, we're already there, verse 8 and 9. It says, but God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Why would Jesus step in? Why would Jesus step in? If, if, if I have to pay for my sin, and the wages of my sin is death, and I have to pay for eternity in the lake of fire, who is God? Who is God? Why would, why would Jesus step in? John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. God wants you to have everlasting life. He did it. Jesus stepped in your place to give you eternal life. And so you don't have to spend an eternity in the lake of fire. Amen? Amen. How is that possible? How, how, how could be that possible? Jesus had to be somebody that could bear my sin. He became the savior of the world. The word savior means the sin bearer. How could he become the sin bearer? That's a good question that some people ask. How could, how could he die for my sin? I can't die for your sin because I have my own sin. I'm born in the likeness of, of, of God, in the image of God, but I'm born with a sin nature. Romans 5.12 tells me that. I'm born with that sin nature. So if Jesus, he couldn't have had a sin nature. You're exactly right, because he was born of the Virgin Mary. He did not inherit a sinful nature. His father is the Heavenly Father, right? The Holy Ghost overshadowed Mary in, in his womb. He was 100% man. He lived. He understood everything about the human life, but he was also 100% God. And only God and, and only Jesus Christ could be that perfect sacrifice to take your sin and to take my sin. And so we don't have to pay it as long as we put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ. In Jesus Christ, who paid for our sin. That's how he could do it. Number one, the motive was because he loved you. But number two is because he, he, was, he was God in the flesh. 
And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. That was Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the man who took your punishment. <coughs> Excuse me. God took all of our sin and placed it on Jesus Christ. All, all of your sin. And say, well, well, what about my future sin? You, know, you, you remember that happened 2,000 years ago when God became a man. And when he died on the cross, lived 33 and a half perfect years, never sinned one time. God placed all of our sins. And what about my future sin? And what about the sins I'm going to do today and, and tomorrow and 30 years from now if we live that long by the grace of God? All of your sin was future sin when it was placed on Jesus Christ. All of your sin. God doesn't say you need to, that he's only going to do some of it and you have to pay for some of it in eternity in hell. That, that wouldn't be just of God. God has to be just because he is holy and righteous and therefore has to go by his attributes. That's who he is. He's sovereign. So he placed on Jesus Christ all of, all of our sin, all of humanity's sin, so that we could have uh, eternal life through him. Amen? Amen. Ooh. 2 Corinthians 5.21, For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Talk about the righteousness of God. What is that righteousness, or rather, who is that righteousness? Yep, you've guessed it. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. In verse 4. It says this, For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. Christ is the end of the law. We don't have to be under the law. The, the, the penalty of sin is death. Christ is the end of that law to those who believe in God. No, to those who uh, get baptized. To those who... Uh, receive a wafer from the priest and confess to the priest. For those who pray five times a day, for those who make a trip to Mecca, know it says, Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. To everyone that believeth. In, in Christ Jesus, there's righteousness. In Christ Jesus, there's righteousness. And faith in him is righteousness to everyone that believeth. He is the end of the law. You can't keep good works. You can't, you can't keep the law and consider yourself righteous. Christ is the end of the law. He said, I break the law. I'm coming and I'm going to take your sin upon me. All past, present, and future sin, which was all future sin in Jesus Christ, took upon him all the sin of the whole world so that we don't have to spend an eternity in hell. Titus 3.5 says, Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing and regeneration of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through our Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> Philippians 3.9 says, And be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Galatians 2.16, Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith of Jesus Christ. He is called in 1 John Chapter 2, verse 1, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for the sins of the whole world. Propitiation means a covering. Like I said, Jesus took, on, took upon him uh, our sin and, and took upon that wrath of God, and it, abided on, and it abided on him so that we don't have to pay for sin. And all you have to do is receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 says it. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. If Christ just took upon him our sin, and he just died, and was in the ground, he never resurrected, we have no hope. You have no hope. But since Jesus resurrected from the grave, he's alive, and, he, and we can trust in him for our eternal security and salvation, because he has the keys over death, because death could not contain him. Amen? Amen. So if we, if, if we put our faith and trust in a man who just said, okay, I'm going to take your sins, I'm going to become sin, and I'm going to die for you, and that's it, you have no hope. Because if he just died, if he can't get up from the grave, then why are we putting our trust in him? But because there is an empty tomb, there is no Savior in the ground, there is nobody in that grave, and he resurrected forever and lives forever at the right hand of the Father. Amen? Amen. So since, we, since he's living at the, at the right hand of the Father, Jesus says, come, on, come unto me. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man open the door and come in, I will sup with him and eat with him. 
He says, Jesus is standing here and saying, put your faith and trust in me. Don't put your faith and trust in Muhammad. He's still in the grave. Don't put your faith and trust in confusion. In Confucius, in confusion, he's still in the grave. John Smith is in the grave. He's buried in Illinois. He's buried in Illinois. You can go to his grave. You go see him. You can't find Jesus' grave. Find his grave. Disprove to me his resurrection, and I'll forfeit my salvation. But until then, until then, my heart will go on singing. Right? Amen. Amen. Woo! That's good stuff. Verse 10, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. God says, you, uh, 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 the, the Bible says here, with the mouth confession is made. If you understand that you're a sinner, you understand that you inherited a sin nature, you understand that there is a penalty for sin, which is death, and you and, for, for, and that Jesus came, but God commendeth. That word commendeth means he demonstrated his love. How did he demonstrate his love to me? Well, he gave his only begotten son to die on the cross. He who knew no sin became sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Amen. Jesus Christ took upon him our sin. Full perfect man, full perfect God, never sinned one time, but took upon him our sin because he loved you. So if you understand you're a sinner, you understand that there's a price for sin, you inherited that sin nature, God paid that price. And if you understand that since God paid that price, he, was, he, he died, he was buried, he resurrected, he lives forevermore. You can put your faith and trust in him. And the Bible says in verse 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Shall be saved. Amen. Shall be saved. You shall be saved if you understand those things. But it's not a mere mental ascent. It's the Spirit of God who brings conviction into your heart. And he, and he says, you need to trust Christ as your Lord and Savior. And you have a volitional likeness to God. Every man does. Every man has a will. Every man can say, I want to receive Christ today. Or that man or woman can say, I do not want to see it, receive Christ today. It's not a mere mental ascent and say, oh, I believe in God. I understand these things. But it's a volitional act and saying, I want to place my faith and trust in Jesus Christ. If I said I could, I hope I don't break this again. Pastor didn't fix it when he left. Um, so, uh, oh, I don't even want to sit on that. Forget that. If I said that, this seat can hold me up. Here, I'll get a chair. If I say this chair, I believe in this chair. And this chair, hopefully everyone can see. I say, I say, church, I believe that that chair will hold me up. <coughs> and someone says, well, prove it. I'm like, no, I'm telling you, I believe that chair will hold me up. But until I put my faith and trust in that chair... Now I sit down, I believe, and I'm trusting and placing my faith and trust in that chair. Now I believe in that chair, and my action show that I believe. Not in my own just, oh yeah, I believe in God, because the Bible says the devils believe and also tremble. But if you call upon the name of the Lord, you understand those things, you shall be saved. Of a broken and contrite spirit, oh God, thou will not despise. If you understand you're a sinner, you understand there's a price for your sin, that Jesus paid the price... You can, by faith, believe in him that he resurrected from the grave and that you can be saved. You cannot do it by works of right, not by works of righteousness, which I have done, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do it. My dad did this. I normally don't do this because I like saving my money, but here's a $5 bill. Who wants this $5 bill? Come up and get it right now. One person. Wow, that was easy. Now, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Woo, with a little string. <laughs> Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Say, you, if you want this money, I'll give it to somebody else. Brother Steve needs it. For by grace you're saved through faith, and that not of yourselves is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Amen. If I, I want to give this man a free gift. Gio, how do you get that on my hand? Now, what did you do to deserve that money? Exactly. Nothing. You say to the camera, nothing. All right, you can go sit down. <laughs> Someone on YouTube, if you're watching, get saved. <coughs> There's nothing you can do for that gift. God says, my son, I'm giving as a free gift to the world. You can take it or receive it. Accept it or reject it. It's your choice. But you have to make the choice. You have to make the choice. Sinner, the ball is in your court. The, ball's in, the ball is in your court. Now, while you're marinating on that, I want to speak to the Christians in the room. Go to, uh, we're already in Romans 10. Go to verse 14. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? 
And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? That's a good verse. <clears throat> that word preacher means to herald, but especially divine truth, i.e. the gospel. So I want to ask you some questions. Are you proclaiming God's word? That's not only the preacher's job. The Great Commission was given to every Christian, not only the disciples. And it's not only the pastor's job. It's incumbent upon every believer to share their faith. Are you proclaiming God's word? Are you sharing the gospel message on a daily basis? Are you showing people the way to Christ? Are you showing people the way to Christ? Verse 17. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Not by sight, not by uh, power, but by faith cometh the hearing and hearing by the word of God. Are you proclaiming truth? Are you proclaiming truth daily? Jeremiah 23, 6, what we started with, I'll quote it again. This is his name whereby he shall be called the Lord our righteous. The only righteous person that ever lived this earth, walked 33 and a half years, perfect sinless was Jesus Christ. And you, and Jesus says, come, uh, uh, Jesus says in John 14, 6, I am the way the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. It's all through Jesus Christ. He is Christ the righteous. Let's pray. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, I thank you for this time. I thank you for this gospel message, Lord. I, I've given it as best as I could. Father, you know. Father, I pray for the hearts in this room, Lord, if there's anyone here that's not saved, Lord, that you will give them a strong desire to be saved, to seek salvation and to know Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. Now, I'm going to ask a couple of questions before we start this invitation, and with every head bowed and every eye closed, no, 